how wonderful is it that we get to spend New Year's Eve doing church together on the very last Sunday morning of the year? I mean, how cool is that? Right? That's very cool. Now, um, to get started, I do have a little confession that I want to make. I am not really a resolution-making type of person. It's just not my thing. In fact, you've probably heard me say before that the first thing that I give up for Lent are my New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> and so while making uh, New Year's resolutions are really not my thing, it's not my cup of tea, I do love tradition, though, and I love ritual. Uh, for instance, when David and I lived in Los Angeles, we never attended the Rose Bowl parade. However, we created our own tradition instead. So what we would do is we would go to Pasadena a couple of days before the parade, and we would actually witness the floats being made. I mean, those intricate uh, Details and dazzling designs were absolutely spectacular. And just the fragrance from all of those flowers was just, I mean, really amazing. So sometimes we would go a couple of days before, and then sometimes we would go the day after, because uh, there would always be a location where they would have all of the floats on display, and you could go and see them up close and personal and those creations, just a real treat. So if you ever get the opportunity, I encourage you to do that. But mostly it was just a wonderful tradition. You probably have some of your own. Now, of course, tomorrow, uh, you know, while I'm cooking the collard greens, the black-eyed peas, and the cornbread, because you cannot, <laughs> you cannot welcome a new year without some southern comfort food. Can I get an Amen. amen. I mean, if you don't cook it, you got to eat it, right? Please promise me that. Have I taught you anything? Now, um, <laughs> but while I'm doing that, you know, the parade will be playing in the background, and I'll be thinking about all those wonderful memories of seeing the floats be made and then seeing them afterward on our little Rose Bowl parade uh, adventures. But when you think about it, it's pretty remarkable, isn't it, that all of us, around the world, around the globe, today, right now, we're focused on the same thing, which is bidding farewell <laughs> to one calendar year and then being open to receive a new one. So that's what we're gathered here to do today, kind of our version of that, and to share in one of our dearest and most sacred unity traditions, the Burning Bowl service. So this is a special time where you get to, uh, in a very safe space here in the sanctuary, where you get to gently just take a look at this, this last year, and then you get to decide, you get to experience what you are going to release and let go of. Now, I know that sounds so simple, right? And it sounds so spiritual, and it is. But it is not always easy. This is why the writer Anne Lamott says, everything I ever let go of has claw marks on it. <laughs> but let go, we must. Let go, we must. And we must let go of the old so that we can clear a pathway to the new, out with the old and in with the new. Let's just say that together. Out with the old and in with the new. Amen. Amen to that. So to help us understand just a little better about uh, at least one perspective of this, I'm going to share a short story with you. Now, it's a little longer than the uh, shares that I usually do on Sunday, but it is a good one. It's a good one. Anybody familiar with this book? Oh, yeah. Woohoo! This is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, written by Judith Vorst. So now, if you are wondering why this is my selection for our message today, it's because we have all been there. Some of us are there. Here is Alexander's story. 
I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box, but in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot also got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickinson liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said, I sang too loud. At counting time, she said, I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and Albert Moya was his next best friend and that I was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag. And Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds. And Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was, because after school, my mom took us all to the dentist, and Dr. Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week, and I'll fix it, said Dr. Fields. Next week, I said... I'm going to Australia. <laughs> on my way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot, and while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I started crying, and when I started crying, Nick said I was a crybaby. And while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I told everyone, but no one even answered. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. But then the shoe man said, we're all sold out. They made me buy an old pair of white ones, but they cannot make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copying machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was as careful as I could be except for my elbow. He also said don't fool around with his phone, but I think I called Australia. <laughs> my dad said, please don't pick him up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner and I hate lima beans. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes. My marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas, and I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not me, it has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that, even in Australia. <laughs> so we've all been there, right? Some of us are there. I mean, technically, this is a children's story, but trust me, the lessons are timeless and ageless. Why? Because wherever you go, there you are. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Wherever you go, there you are. You know, some days are better than others, yes, but the truth is like anything. 
It only has the meaning that you give it. It only has the power that you give it. It only has the weight that you give it. And so if you choose to drag the baggage of a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day with you into the next day or into the next year, just don't be surprised when you spot it spinning around on the baggage claim carousel with your name on it, even in Australia. Right? Are you with me? So you got to unpack that baggage, right? You got to unpack what is weighing you down and you got to let it go. Let it go, let it go, right? You got to let it go. And today you are in the right place and this is your opportunity. Now, in other words, you get to choose what you're going to bless and you get to choose what you're going to let go of before you go into 2024. Now, my prayer for you today is that you leave here knowing that the deepest part of your soul, in your deepest part of your soul, with everything that you are, that you absolutely can, you absolutely can, in a flash, with pyrotechnics, you can change your thinking from an old way to a new way, from what seemed like it was impossible, 23 seconds on the clock, what was impossible <laughs> to what is absolutely possible, from what is limited or feels limited to what is unlimited. I assure you, God is unlimited. God is unlimited. But you have to be willing to release your thoughts and your feelings and your regrets and your anger and your frustration and your obsessions and your guilt and your fear. Am I talking to anybody? Anybody here have any of that? All of that has to go. It has to go. Life is supposed to be fun. Amen? Okay, so this is actually a two-step process um, uh, for our service today, and the first part is the burning bowl, and the second part is the note of affirmation and intention, and then together these two rituals, uh, they form in unity what we call denials and affirmations, and that's just sort of a metaphysical way of saying releasing what you don't want letting go of what you don't want so that you can replace it so that you've made room for, so that you've cleared the path for what you are envisioning for 2024. So before we get started on the first part, I want to take just a, just a few minutes for some logistics, so hang in here with me. Now, if you're here in person, if you're here in person in the sanctuary, uh, you were given an envelope when you came in. Now, does everybody have an envelope? If you do not have one, just raise your hand. Oh, my goodness. What? Okay. Well, good, because I have, I have some logistics. So uh, let's make sure that you have an envelope. Now, inside the envelope, you will find a blank card. You will find a piece of fl uh, flash paper. And you will also find a heart sticker. And you're also going to need a pen to write on your flash paper. So if you don't have a pen, make sure to let uh, Lori or Marion know that you also need a pen. Now, if you're online with us today, or if you're viewing sometime on demand in the future, this is my cautionary advice. Please do not light regular paper on fire. This is not a good idea. Do not do it. Instead of flash paper, all you need is like a little square piece of paper, like a post-it or a post-it size. And then you can either like tear it into pieces, or if you have a shredder, you can shred the, the paper. Uh, that's what we call the cosmic shredder, by the way. Now, here's another idea, and this is going to tickle you pink. Another idea, if you're online, uh, is to use toilet paper. Now, you may have to fold it a couple of times to be able to write on it, 
Uh, but you can use toilet paper, and instead of burning it or shredding it, you can actually flush it. And that's what we call the holy flush. <laughs> Woohoo! The holy flush. It's, it's kind of wonderful, too, because you'll see it dissolve. Now, so, uh, if you're at home, again, you're going to need an envelope, you're going to need a blank piece of paper, and it does not matter the size of the paper or the envelope. Uh, and if you need to, also, you can just fold the paper in half. Okay, so back to all of it. Does everybody have an envelope now? Woohoo! Did you guys get one? Okay, all right, it's coming. No, I, do, I do have one, but these guys need one. These, these guys need it. No. Okay, all righty, so way to go. Thank you, Marion and Lori, thank you. The, the greeters with the mostest. Um, okay, so back to us here in the sanctuary. So um, you're going to have your blank card, like Carol Merrill, does everybody remember Carol, that, right? And then you have your flash paper, right? Yep, everybody's got a pen, and you have your heart sticker. Is everybody good to go? Okay, so as we move through this first part of the service, um, I'm reminded of something that T.S. Eliot said, for last year's words belong to last year's language, and next year's words await another voice, and to make an end is to make a beginning. That's the way it works. With every ending, there will be a new beginning. And so, please notice that that piece of flash paper is intentionally small because you do not need to write a novel. You do not need to write an epic. You can write a word or a phrase or maybe, maybe even a symbol. So it's small on purpose because God already knows the story. And we don't want you to relive it you want to think about it succinctly and, and gracefully. Are you with me? Okay. So, for example, these are some things that you're going to take into your heart for consideration. Is it feeling unworthy? Is that what you're releasing from 2023? Is it feeling unlovable? How about unforgiveness of yourself or of others? This is a big one. This is a big one. What is the first thing that comes to mind in whom or what? You know in your heart you just need to release. Do not take it into 2024. It's been enough already, right? Do not take it into 2024. Is it some kind of numbing behavior? Don't want to step on anybody's toes, but, I mean, there are plenty of addictions to choose from. Perhaps it's something that you need to stop doing, right? Like, uh, stop trying to please everyone, stop being a people pleaser, uh, stop thinking that you're not good enough, maybe stop uh, caring about what other people think. You know, really, what other people think of you is absolutely none of your business. What other people think of me is none of my business. Let's just say that together. What other people think of me is none of my business, right? Uh, maybe you want to stop ignoring your mental well-being. Maybe you need to tune in and start paying attention to your mental wellness, right? Uh, maybe you need to stop hanging around people who exhaust you and don't inspire you. Uh, maybe you need to stop being guilted into staying into situations that you know are not working for you anymore. How about maybe not eating so many unhealthy foods? You know, something that you know that is keeping your body temple from being all that it can be. Do you need to put a myrtle on it? If you don't know what that means, come see me. <laughs> what about too much work and not enough play? What about procrastination? You know, perhaps it's putting off things that are calling you and really wanting you to step into them, right? You know, last week we talked about Mary and Joseph and, and uh, Jesus and what it means for you to be birthing something. It has nothing to do with gender. 
Like, what is wanting to be birthed from you? How about your career or retirement? You know, who do you spend your time with? You know, time is something that you cannot get back, right? You do something, you don't like it, you can ask for your money back, but you cannot ask for your time back. Amen? Uh, what about fear or anger, maybe around finances or money? Uh, were you generous in 2023? Were you generous? Did you share your time, your talent, and your treasure? What about your spiritual practice? Like, did you really take the time to pray about your challenges? In other words, did you talk about it more than you prayed about it? Maybe there's a relationship in your life that feels toxic, and you know that you know that you know it's time to just let that go. So these are just a few things to uh, consider. So while Cornell and uh, Kenny are going to serenade us, I invite you to turn within, to follow your guidance what to write. And again, the reason the paper is small is because you want to be graceful and succinct. What are you letting go of? Now, in just a few minutes, uh, you'll be invited by Lori and Marion to come forward. David and Steve are going to set up the burning bowl. So not right now, but take your time with what you're guided to write on your flash paper. And then you will come forward and you'll drop that flash paper, pyrotechnics, uh, in the burning bowl. Now, really all that has to happen is the corner of it. Uh, uh, we'll get, and poof, it'll go up in a flash. That's why it's called flash paper. And as you do that, you may want to say a little prayer, like, I release, I let go. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. I release, I let go. Now, no matter what, you drop it in. Oh, is it burning? Do not stick your hand in the ball. Promise me you will not stick your hand in the bulb. Our fire tender, Steve and David, will take care of it, and they'll make sure that it's all good. Okay? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Cornell and Kenny. And uh, in some time, you'll be invited to come forward and release, release, release into the burning bulb.
Audrey, did you get your envelope back? Yeah. You can't hear me? What? Yes, yes, yes. So I want to invite you to place your hand over your heart. And let's just take a couple of very easy breaths, just breathing in. <sighs> breathing out. Breathing in. <sighs> breathing out. And this time I want to hear everybody, ah, breathing in and out. Ah. Amen. 
And so now we're going to move into the second part of our service with the note of affirmation and intention for 2024. Uh, first, I want to share a very heartwarming story uh, with you about Opal Lee, who, of course, is known as the grandmother of Juneteenth and lives in our backyard in Fort Worth. Now, it turns out that when Opal was 12 years old, her family faced a truly horrifying ordeal when a racist mob threatened them and then destroyed their home, destroyed their home. Now, I just read about this a couple of days ago, but after 84 years since that happened, she is getting that land back. Opa Lee is getting that land back, right? I mean, isn't that incredible? So she found out that Trinity Habitat for Humanity owns the land, and so she asked if she could buy it. And when she reached out to them, she also realized that she and the executive director, Gage Yeager, they've known each other for years. Yet she had never shared this truly painful story with them about what had happened to her and her family on East Annie Street. In fact, he said, this is, this is what he said, that she never wore that story on her sleeve or talked about it. So what was Mr. Yeager's response to her purchase request? He said, well, Op Opal, we won't sell it to you. We'll give it to you. And in fact, they are in the process of building her a home. And at 97, she has set her intention to move into it, right? In fact, she said, I could do a holy dance, I tell you. If you take nothing else with you today, take that with you out through those doors. Do a holy dance, right? So what a blessing that something good could come from something so tragic that happened many, many years ago. And did you notice how Mr. Yeager mentioned that Opal Lee didn't wear this pain on her sleeve? And I mean, she is a legendary activist. She got things to do. She can't be weighed down, right, by that. So I don't know about you, but for me, that is a powerful reminder that if Opal Lee can let some stuff like that go for her best and highest good, I can too. And so can you too. So can you. So with that, does everybody have the remainder of your envelope with your blank card? Does everybody have a pen? Everybody got your heart sticker? So here's what I want for you to do. I want you to open it up lengthwise. So you don't have to stay in the lines on this and treat it like a card. But at the top, I want you to write... December 31st, 2024. Oh, no, 24. December 31st. Hang with me. This isn't my first rodeo. Uh, December 31st, 2024. And then I want you to make notes on the rest of this about what is happening in 2024. So in other words, the feeling tone of what you're doing isn't about what you want to happen. It isn't about what you think is going to happen. You are writing this in the energy of knowing that when you ask believing, you are already receiving. So you're asking in the energy of as if it is already happening. Do you hear the difference? Right? So, for example, I am so grateful for my perfect health. I am so grateful for my right and perfect job. 
thank you, God, for my right and perfect weight. I have all the money I can spend. I am abundantly blessed. Let's just say that one together. I am abundantly blessed. I am so thankful for my peace of mind. I am thankful for the loving, harmonious relationships in my life. I am thankful for my spiritual growth. I am thankful that my life gets better and better and easier and easier. I am so grateful for all of the awesome travel that I'm doing this year. I am so grateful, I'm so happy to be a cheerful giver. So those are just some some ideas. I want you to use your power of imagination to see your life in December 2024 with love, with laughter, with light, with blessings, with purpose, with grace. Whatever it is that you desire, that your true hearts desire, give thanks for it in advance, blessing it, knowing that you are being divinely guided. And remember, this is important, It is not I, but the Christ within that does the work. It is not I, but it is God in me as me. It is not I, but the Spirit within that does the work. Trust me, you are not. You you may be in charge, but you're not in control. You want to be precise. You want to be clear. So... Don't put hundreds of things on here. Here are some categories for you to consider. Uh, Health, wealth, relationships, career or retirement, spiritual growth, your spiritual practice. Okay, so at the bottom of the note card, so at the top, you've got December 31st, 2024, then you've got your your notes, your affirmative notes. And then down at the bottom, I want you to write this or something better. Thank you, God. This or something better. Thank you, God. Because this way you really are leaving room for spirit to unfold, for spirit to do its mighty work. So then after you're finished, you'll seal the envelope with your heart sticker. And then I want you to take it home and put it in a very safe place where you won't forget. And then in December of 2024, you will open it. You will open it. And then you will get to see what has happened. I just opened my 2023 envelope. How many of you done that? in the last several weeks. Not yet. Today's the day. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I mean, it was pretty amazing to see how many things have actually happened, and it's also amazing, like the things I just absolutely forgot that I wrote down. Now, here's the thing. If it doesn't happen by December 2020, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that it's still in process. Or maybe you're being guided to do something else, this or something better, right? And if that's the case, then you'll write that down. Okay, so with that, Cornell and Kenny are going to serenade us while you take some time to work on this precious note of affirmation and intention.
envelope, you'll want to write open December 2024. invite you to place your hand over your heart. Let's take a couple of very easy breaths. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. And so now I invite you to join in a time of prayer and meditation. This is a closing prayer and meditation for our burning bowl service. So you want to get comfortable in your chair. Let your feet rest flat on the floor and your hands just ever so lightly in your lap. And just continue to breathe into your heart space. Breathe into your knowing about everything that you have experienced in our service today. Being ever so gentle with yourself. Knowing that you are breathing life into this prayer. And now just feel the gratitude, the deep gratitude and joy for releasing all that is not in your best and highest good, for just letting it go. Give thanks for all the good that's coming forth in your life and all the good that is already here all the good that you are already experiencing. Be truly appreciative, truly, for everyone and everything in your life, knowing that your life is always unfolding in the right and perfect way, that everything is always working out for you, that your ever greater good is always unfolding. Know that if you have a desire and a dream, it was planted in you by God, by the divine. You are dreaming your dream for a reason, and God knows the how. God knows how to move it forward. Trust God. Trust the process. Allow the love of God and the peace of God to just simply wash over you and feel it in every fiber, every tissue, and every cell in your being. With every thought, every word, and every action. Simply let God be God in you, expressing as you right here, right now, right here, right now. Divine order, divine guidance, success, love, peace. 
peace of mind and harmony are all yours. They're all yours. And now let your heart hold these words, these very truths. I am abundantly blessed in this new year. I am divinely guided in all areas of my life in this new year. I am healthy and whole from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. I am healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul in this new year. And so I take with me today the memory and the profound knowing that I can choose at any time to release any thoughts, words, or deeds, any actions that do not serve me. I'm grateful for this awareness. And I remember that I can do this at any time. And I remember to remember that I am set free from any ideas of lack or limitation. God is my one true source. And I am open to receive an abundance of prosperity in all areas of my life. This is the divine order of my life. God is my one true source. And there is always more where that came from. For this awareness, I am so grateful. So grateful. Thank you, God. And so it is. 